<laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I actually just renamed it Interactivity. Um, I like the Interactivity also, but it depends on the context. Who are you talking to? And today I'm going to talk a bit more about the hardware side of my interaction with um, artists. I'm not an artist myself, but I like playing with them and helping them if I can. Uh, the way I'm going to talk about it is kind of geographic, as I was saying. Uh, I grew up in France, um, traveled a little bit in different parts of the world. <coughs> so quickly, I go through Europe, South America, the US, and Asia. Um, normally, I would give a quick um, background about myself. But basically, I've been playing with music for a while, uh, gave up school for that. Um, then I went back and I kind of learned a lot of cool things to do with sound and um, technology. And obviously there's a lot of equivalents in other medias like videos. So I start with Europe. Uh, my final um, degree was a, a remotely controlled segue. So it's not very artistic if you think about it, but it gives a point of view of how technical uh, I was trying to get at the time. Uh, kind of taking another path maybe now. Uh, so just to show you because it's funny, very quickly. Well, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you can remotely control the thing and just enjoy it. So you can see she's not very confident, it's the first time she's taking it. <laughs> and it kind of works. Well, I just keep quickly. Well, that's the remote. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's whatever. Just to show a little bit of some of the tech. Then in my same degree, I was um, also honored to make a little scholar project that was in partnership with a museum. So there's this artist who makes this real size rhinoceros. Um, the idea was to give some interactivity uh, for the visitor in the museum, uh, because this rhinoceros can actually open its, its furniture. It's, it has a table and uh, everything, you, you could store things. And basically, in the, in the museum, you could not really feel how powerful, how all the cool things you could do with it. Um, so I offered uh, that project, and it was accepted. The technique is using a Kinect, you can see up there. And when you get in the middle, it shows you different points of view. When you get in the, in the side, with your other points of view. And finally on the right side also. And if you try to touch it, then it yells. <laughs> That's actually the sound of a rhinoceros. Uh, when they are attacking another one, they do this weird sound. Uh, the idea was that at this era of digital everything, uh, when you want to touch things, we have other ways of helping people in their uh, curiosity. And I thought that would be a, a cool way of playing with Kinect. That was a few years ago. Um, so in general, this talk is about showing what I did. And if any of you is interested in doing something similar or using some of this, I, I have everything on GitHub. I'm happy to share, happy to explain it. Um, another project I did after I graduated was a, a musical controller. So you carry this thing, very beautiful, on your body. And it's uh, actually four uh, pads. So you can see this is one and so on. And you can hit them. So uh, they're the size of your chest. And by hitting them, you trigger samples remotely. So there's like the kind of Arduino called Tinsy, a wireless module, and that's the receiver over here. And it behaves as a MIDI instrument. That's amazingly simple to use. Forever one of you wants to play with music, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, little demo. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that was just showing one pad. So he's kind of beatboxing, but with his body. So body boxing or beat body, I don't know how you call it. Um, we called it body air drum, but the sound, the acronym was bad, body air drum. So we called it tap me instead, that's bad. Another project uh, using the energy of the visitor or the user. Uh, this one is a, a cycle kind of augmented reality bicycle on which uh, you pedal and generate energy to video project uh, whatever you want. And so we used a, a motor from um, a washing machine and basically the, the energy that you generate is enough to power a video projector, a computer for variable speed video. And that's a very <laughs> simple first uh, test also. So the video projector is inside of a truck. The thing was totally mobile and autonomous electrically. So we video project by the background and on the other side you have people bicycling and it shows them another point of view of where you could be and the faster you go the faster uh, the video goes so you feel like you are actually traveling in that. As you can see, an amazing uh, videographer. <laughs> um, so then I went to Colombia, uh, got to work with an interesting artist. He's a, she's a photographer and she weaves picture. So it's not that obvious, but you if you take twice the same picture and you cut it vertically for one and cut it horizontally for the other, then you weave them, you get this interesting shape that I was frustrated because I didn't really understand it. So I suggested to make it uh, physical, like mobile. And I found that this um, analogy of the, the hologram was interesting. So basically, if you, if you move with, there's a sensor that uh, detects your position. And if you get closer, you have a bit like in this um, old school hologram, um, the, the point of view or the, the piece of art itself changes a bit like if you were a VIP uh, visiting the artist while he's doing it, she's doing it. So this is the, the actual picture moving physically. It's not a Photoshop thing or a video. And so you can see the vertical stripes are moving vertically. So this uses a, a sonar sensor, an Arduino, and a simple motor with a servo. Uh, then I got to play with a, a group friends uh, called Sistema Solar. They do a lot of amazing shows uh, in Colombia and they travel a little bit. And there was this kind of frustration on the DJ. To me, there was not enough um, visualization of what he was doing. You hear it, it's amazing, but you don't really understand what he's doing. So I played with a, it's a, it's a vinyl kind of virtual scratch system. It's called Serato. Uh, the vinyl has a time code. You can listen to it with an Arduino and analyze the signal. Basically, you amplify it, you saturate actually, and you measure how many ticks uh, you get to control either an LED strip or any video you want. Uh, so you can see the, this thing is just eight LEDs that are rotating at the speed of the vinyl. Oops, sorry. So just a proof of concept, <laughs> once again. Uh, if, the, if the vinyl goes backward, you can see it on the on the LED, and if it goes slowly, you can also see. Just a way of visualizing things. Uh, then I went to San Francisco, worked for this company called Sifteo. Uh, they make these uh, touch, touch screen based cubes that can detect each other, and they also have an accelerometer. Uh, with my musical background, I had this first idea of controlling music with it. 
Uh, sadly, I lost the video. I have it there in San Francisco, but not here. But basically, the, each of the cube can, for example, control a track. Uh, it can control an effect. It can control the volume. And it can also enable, for example, the recording mode, uh, depending on what software you play with. Um, I got to play with another kind of interactive uh, system. These cubes, they, they can emit sound. Uh, they, they talk to a bass that have a, has a, a, sp a little speaker. And there was this frustration again uh, that you cannot communicate with the phone. So uh, I worked with this um, application that can detect DTMF. It's the old school um, tonal system that you would have when you call someone like do, 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 so on. And you're going to hear it. So you see, I had ABC in the cubes, and here you can see ABC uh, was transmitted just by the sound. So very simple proof of concept again. And if you have CAB, just does CAB. Simple, stupid. Then I worked with guys I met in the hackerspace called Noise Bridge in San Francisco on this project called Pulse of the City. Uh, this artist there was frustrated again. Everything is about frustration and how to solve that. Um, he was frustrated by these uh, coin machines on which you pay. It's the park meter. You put coins and you can pay for your car and it's kind of ugly and it's everywhere. He wanted to give it some love, and some more aesthetical part and bring some smile. Uh, so we put a, a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, the usual suspect, uh, battery, um, 3G module, um, a USB, uh, whatever. And the idea was to allow uh, people who walk by, just the passerby, hold the, the handles and make music at the speed of their heartbeat. So the video is actually not really obvious. Uh, so that was in Boston, but there was also one in San Francisco. <laughs> That's the Maya, as you can see. <laughs> Very serious. <laughs> and the artist. <laughs> well, whatever. Once again, if you want to play with variable speed sound or music or video or whatever, this is pretty simple. I have that on uh, GitHub, I can show you. Then I went to this um, festival called Burning Man uh, with the Noise Bridge Gang. Um, there's a lot of amazing art, art installations. Um, it's the biggest art gallery in the world. It's uncurated, you can go put your thing. Everyone sees it, there's like 68,000 in the, in the last time when I went, I think it's even bigger every year. Um, so this was a set of installations, a couple of mushrooms that throw fly, flames, um, two that are interacting with light. Um, so that's probably the most uh, impressive. But basically the, the one I was working on uh, was this uh, mushroom that makes sounds. When you get closer, it's uh, breathing with a kind of stressful way. Uh, the, the, the closer you get, the faster it's breathing. And if you want to calm it down, you just hug it. And there's a, a little uh, pressure sensor that I made with a, a fabric that has carbon inside. And if you put that in sandwich with conductive fabric, you can measure the pressure. Uh, so. Uh, infrared sensors to measure the distance of people around and pressure sensor that were made with uh, fabric. Um, you could buy something already made but it would not be big enough so we made our own. Uh, pretty simple. Um, then I came to this hacker trip to China with this guy called Mitch Altman. If you know him you can recognize the hacker. Um, we got to, to visit a few interesting places. Uh, there's this uh, Tsinghua University that was organizing um, a visit from different hackers from all over the world. 
If you're interested, they are actually organizing the next uh, occurrence for October. Uh, it's open, anyone can go. You just go on this website, uh, I'll give you the link if you're interested. Uh, and you get to, so you get your, your ticket paid, your food, your accommodation, um, and there's like a two week um, period in, in Tsinghua, Beijing, and two weeks in Tsinghua, Shenzhen. Um, at least that's, why, uh, that's how we were invited. Um, and then they, they show us around like factories and uh, we get to see all the tricks that they, they have and uh, we get to present our project, you can recognize the hat. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll talk about hardware a little more in depth if you're interested afterward. Um, but yeah, that's a, a really interesting thing. Uh, get to not only see how factories are, but a lot of really cool hacker spaces in China and how people see that over there, it's quite different. Then, ah, I lost something. <laughs> Here there was written Crowell. Um, so I, I arrived in Singapore and I got to spend some time in this place called Growell that actually just shut down or maybe not shut down, but ends the pop-up uh, last Saturday, but um, they play with growing things and got to experiment like some of these uh, sensors to see how uh, you could have an automatic uh, watering system or how to, you could um, monitor uh, mice <laughs> to try to understand how they behave in face of your traps that usually don't work. Uh, if you're interested by that, it's, it's really a, an art project, <laughs> how to catch mice. <laughs> <laughs> then I got to meet uh, Jacqueline, um, who is at the end, and uh, George. Actually, I met him in Hong Kong, and then he came here. He understood that this place is actually, that's where it's happening. Um, so we will see how this collaboration go, but maybe we get to, we'll get to do an interesting project that involves fire and dancing. She might be the dancer, we'll see. <laughs> and now I'm working on this wireless motion sensor that I call TWIS for tangible wireless IMUs. IMU meaning um, inertial measurement unit. The idea is to measure either object motion or your own motion or your cat or your mice motion. Uh, but it's the sensor itself that is moving uh, to measure its own motion. Um, I feel like there's something interesting if you want to play with motion of things. Um, but to explain how we came up to this idea that I'm going to show a little afterward, um, this is basically what my startup in France does. We make these big multi-touch screens that also can <laughs> can be used to control music, but not only. Uh, in this case, we have objects that are recognized by the table, and they have all a different, a unique identifier, and they all can control a different uh, filter, effect, volume, or just on off for a track uh, by rotating them, because we also measure the, the orientation of it. So you might be familiar with the React table, this is an open source equivalent. So that's my lab in Paris. This guy is uh, the guy who invented that um, open source, um, he developed that open source version and we just kidnapped him to have that thing with us. So we have that in Python now, but it's originally in C Sharp, I think. Um, so we got this frustration of the two dimensional aspect of the table. You cannot interact when you take out the object outside. So we thought, let's just play with the, the common um, Thing that you would use like an Arduino, a motion sensor, and a, a wireless module. The problem is that the antenna is um, not really happy with metal in front of it. Uh, the magnetic sensor doesn't like metal also. So we had this interferences problem and it was too big and we made a smaller one. 
So I actually have it in my pocket. Uh, if you want to uh, maybe pass it. Um, so I can do a quick demo with my phone and show you in video also. Uh, I have a problem with the, the Bluetooth in my computer right now. <laughs> but I have a, a Python app that does the same in the computer normally. But it actually crashes in my computer right now. This is still a prototype. Uh, all of it is open source, the hardware, the firmware, and the software. So if you are interested in measuring the orientation of things or how it's moving, uh, it's actually sending uh, the, the accelerometer data for, for the three dimension of it and uh, the orientation of the, of the object itself. So you have the north and south, but you can also rotate. And the idea is to forward it uh, using the protocol called OSC. Uh, so you can control visualization, uh, motors, sound, flames. That's what I want to do, my little <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> and maybe burn something, we'll see. Um, so that's a, a little demo we did with a, one of our big tables. So it's just controlling a 3D model of, um, of a clock, of a watch. Um, so just the rotation and how you tilt it. And I went to this hackathon in San Francisco with uh, friends from Sifteo. We did uh, a little musical controller just as a proof of concept in 24 hours. Um, yeah. The idea is that there's this analogy between sound and color, um, hot sound, hot color, that can be used to maybe teach kids um, the, the simplest way of um, understanding music. So we have this kind of musical writing system. So each color is uh, virtually a, a sound and you have a feedback on the on the object itself so inside of the object uh, you have inside of the egg you have this sensor that I was showing you and that's, that's what happens Simple and stupid, we didn't sleep much, but that was really good. Uh, so we won the hackathon and we'll see what's the next step. So thank you for listening. If you're interested in any of the project I, I made and want to play with it, you go on my honet.eu, my website. Uh, the slides are here. It's good. Uh, we can put it online. Okay, um Senator, can I take a seat, please? Let's do it.